whether sitting down with your family to dinner, enjoying a night out, or celebrating special events and holidays, it seems that wine has always had a place at the table. But do you ever wonder how it's made? How do you get those tasty grapes from the vine to turn into the bottle of wine on your dinner table? We spoke with Dana Keeler, the winemaker at Silver Coast Winery here in Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina. He explained just what goes into creating that delicious bottle of wine on your table. My name is Dana Keeler. I'm the winemaker here at Silver Coast Winery in Brunswick County. I've been making wine for 34 years now. I started in 1976. Uh, this will be my 34th vintage anyway, if I've done the math right. Dana's life plans didn't always include becoming a winemaker. I decided that I needed to take a break from college. I'd been working a, a pretty heavy schedule of math, science, organic chem, biology, uh, calculus. I took a break, took a semester off, and went to the vineyards in my backyard. I grew up in the Finger Lakes area of New York, and the wineries appeared to be a logical place to get a job that would apply some of the skills that I'd learned in the classroom. I went to the various wineries around the lakes. Uh, at the end of the day, I had two job offers, both of them not exactly what I wanted. Instead of working in a quality control lab, I was offered a position hauling grapes out of the vineyard, picking up the grape boxes and delivering them to the cellar. I took the job uh, from one of the wineries, Bully Hill Vineyards, and uh, at that point I began to, a series of uh, fortuitous circumstances that led to my getting into winemaking. Changes of personnel during the harvest resulted in me, in, resulted in me going from picking up boxes of grapes uh, to coordinating the harvesting of the fruit and the delivery to the, to the wine cellar. At the end of harvest, another change of personnel in the cellar left an opening for me to move into the cellar operations. And six months later, the cellar master moved on to take a position as a winemaker at another winery. And the winemaker asked me to be the cellar master. So at that point, I was kind of securely in position and on that path to become a winemaker. Wine is a very natural process, and the making of wine has been done for centuries. Wine has been a beverage that's always been safe. It's been uh, part of probably what has shaped and evolved our civilization. Wine is a natural process of grapes being harvested. And, and making wine is easy. It's doing it well and consistently that gets to be, uh, that's, that's my challenge. That, that's what my job is to do. But grapes will naturally spoil and as grapes spoil, they turn into alcohol. The yeast that is naturally present in the environment will convert the sugars in that grape juice into alcohol and carbon dioxide, producing wine. When making wine, Dana knows that good wine begins with good fruit. Making good wine begins with selecting good fruit, finding appropriate and well-grown fruit for the winemaking process. What I do to achieve this is I've selected a core of grape growers. Right now I'm working with four very, very consistently that I've found understand my needs as a winemaker. They're, they grow grapes for winemaking as opposed to growing just grapes. That's an important aspect because it begins with good fruit. Good fruit makes my job as a winemaker much easier. I can take good fruit or great fruit and produce wonderful wines. If I have lesser quality fruit, it's a much, much di more difficult task and harder to get the ultimate product to the consumer. Not only is the quality of the fruit important, but Dana's relationship with the grape growers also helps to create a good product. I work with the growers, visit the vineyards, express to them what my interests and needs are, check the quality of the fruit on the vine. Um, that's all part of the initial process of producing a great bottle of wine. When we decide it's time to harvest the fruit, and it's a mutual decision based on weather and the quality of the fruit, how much uh, qual more quality we think we can get. Uh, in this area, we have hurricanes that we're concerned with. So sometimes the decisions are a little bit more driven by weather than getting the ultimate quality in the fruit. But if you left it hanging out through the, through the hurricane, you'd lose the quality of the fruit. So we might choose to harvest before a hurricane as opposed to after. The grapes are hand-picked into 1,000-pound bins, immediately placed under refrigeration to protect the fruit and preserve the quality. 
At the end of the day, when my order is completed, they order up a, a, a tractor trailer driver who comes over, picks up the load of fruit, drives it under refrigeration through the night, and delivers it on our doorstep here at Ocean Isle Beach the next morning, six o'clock. That begins the process. The arrival of grapes also brings with it long days of prepping the grapes to be made into wine. We start by unloading just that portion of grapes that my machinery can handle. I've got a destemmer crusher that can process about eight tons per hour. If I'm doing reds, I can process as quickly as we need to because we run it through the destemmer crusher directly into the fermentation bins. The reds, to produce a red wine, have to be fermented with the skins. So I can run it about eight tons per hour and turn the truck around fairly quickly. If I'm doing white grapes, however, we have to go from the destemmer crusher to our press. The press holds three tons of grapes, so I can only batch out three tons at a time. The rest of the fruit stays under refrigeration until I can get to it. Those days when we're doing whites tend to be very long days. 18 tons of grapes come in, three tons per hour. I've got six batches to do, and each load of grapes through the press takes about two and a half to three hours. Long days, but that's what harvest is all about. Six, seven days a week runs uh, from early September through the middle to end of October in some years. We call it the crush, and for good reason. By the end of the uh, season, you feel like you've been crushed yourself. The destimmer crusher is a high-tech piece of equipment used to turn the grape juices into usable materials for the wine. It takes the place of grape stomping in the past. The destimmer is a cage, a perforated cage that has a center shaft going through uh, the middle of it with uh, paddles on it. Those are spinning at a very high rate of speed. And as the grapes are fed into that chamber, slapping of the paddles, the centrifugal force will separate the grape from the stem. The grape passes through the perforation, the round holes in the cage. The grapes fly out of that cage and collect in a little tray underneath. The stems being larger, are corkscrewed out to the far end of the machine where they drop on the ground. We're removing the stems from the process because the stems can be bitter. The destem fruit then passes through two roller be uh, bearings, uh, two rollers that are set just far enough apart that they lightly will crush uh, or split the grape. We don't want to grind the fruit. Uh, we just want to lightly crush the fruit, break the skin, so that the juice is starting now to flow a little bit from the grape. Not grind it because then we get a lot of bitterness and astringency from the seeds and from the skins. So we just lightly break the skin of the barrel, or, uh, the, lightly break the skin of the grape with the uh, rollers that are in that machine. Destemmer, crusher, uh, and from there, the grapes will either go, as I said, to the stainless steel for fermentation if they're red, or if they're whites, they go directly to the press. The press is a bladder type press. It's a stainless steel drum, and virtually all the equipment that we work with is stainless steel because it doesn't react with the, uh, with the grapes or the juice. It's a very neutral, inert medium, and that's why stainless is used extensively now in the industry. We'll work with barrels at a later point, uh, but stainless in the, in the beginning, so we avoid any, any uh, possible uh, contamination or impact on the fruit. Uh, the, the press is a stainless steel drum with perforations, little very, very narrow slots all the way around that drum. Uh, and in the center of that drum is a bladder we fill the grapes, the crushed, uh, the, the drum with crushed fruit, close up the door on that, uh, on that drum, and then inflate the bladder using air pressure. As we inflate the bladder, it pushes the grapes to the outside of the cylinder, and the juice.